three groups had this letter that was requested to be anonymous. Diane Feinstein and her staff, the congresswoman from California and her staff, and the lawyers. Somebody betrayed her trust, and if you can't figure out why, you shouldn't be driving. Christine Ford had wanted to remain anonymous. She didn't want to testify yesterday. She didn't want anyone to know her name. She only went public with her allegations after somebody leaked them to the press. Just a few weeks ago, only a few people knew, knew about the letter that she'd written to Congressman Anna Eshoo and that it made its way to Senator Dianne Feinstein's office. And from one of those offices, her identity made it to reporters. Who did that? And why aren't Democrats interested in finding out the identity of the person who did that, since supposedly they care so deeply about Christine Ford. Andy McCarthy was an assistant U.S. attorney for the Southern District of New York. Joe DeGeneva was a U.S. attorney in Washington. They both joined us tonight. Andy, to you first, why would it be so hard to find out how this information got from one of two congressional offices to the Washington Post? Tucker, if we assume that it had to be one of those two offices, then it should be a small world of, of people. I think the problem that we have factually is that the first press outlet who got it, The Intercept, now says that Feinstein, Senator Feinstein, was not the source. That doesn't mean that the other California uh, Congress creditor, as you point out, could not be the source, or that it could have come from the lawyers, or perhaps a, an acquaintance or friend of, of uh, Dr. Ford. But while it's a small amount of people who are in the circle of uh, the possible leaker. And if you made an aggressive investigation, you might be able to get some leads quickly. Certainly, if Kavanaugh can be investigated seven times, you'd think that this might be at least worth a once-over. Well, you would think they're that, They're not Joe, apparently interested. If you cared about Christine Ford, wouldn't you care deeply about who betrayed her and overturned her life. Well, of course you would, but this is not what it's about for the Democrats. This is not about ethics or morality or rightness. It's about power. The Democrats leaked this. Her lawyers leaked it. Maybe she leaked it. Somebody in her family leaked it. We know one thing. It wasn't the Republicans who leaked it because they didn't have the letter. So it was somebody who wanted to use her and to make it part of the process of trying to just flay away at Judge Kavanaugh. This is part of the disgusting display that the Democrats have created. They're trying to make it look like it's something that's serious. In fact, it's awful. And it's demeaning the country. It's demeaning the Senate. I don't know what effect it's having on Miss Dr. Ford or whatever her name is. The bottom line is, this is an attempt to destroy a good man and his family. And the Democrats are succeeding. And they got their delay on the vote on the Senate floor. And they may ultimately win. So that's for sure. So, Andy McCarthy, you've watched this for the last two weeks. I'm sure you've been as riveted as the rest of us. You follow this stuff already for a living. What's your, I mean, give me your 30 second takeaway. What do you make of all this? What have you learned? That it's, it's just phenomenal that the Democrats could not more clearly signal that what this is all about is delay, delay, delay. No matter what they're talking about, whether it's, uh, you know, the victims or the survivors or somebody's uh, privacy or the need for an FBI investigation, uh, it's all about delay. And yet the Republicans seem to think if we just give them a little bit more delay, we can bring this thing to closure. And I just, for the, for the life of me, I can't wrap my brain around that. I can't either. Have you ever seen anything this cynical? Honestly, you've been here a long no. time. Now, you know, I came here in 1967, 51 years ago. I have never seen anything like this. And to watch Senator Coons today do that unctuous, just supercilious description of how, how wonderful it was to work with Senator Flake and how well, all we wanted was just a little bit more time. <laughs> I mean, this goofy, disgusting performance by the Democrats, you know, the Senate used to be a beautiful place. It's now a very, very ugly place. And the American people are being just, just harmed by this. It's awful. It's just awful for the country. And the Democrats don't care one whit because all they care about is power. It's true. Andy Joe, thank you both very much. Thank I you. I hope you get a weekend away from all this stuff. <laughs> I'm going to try to.